Hey, hey everyone, and a welcome in, welcome back, it's Monkey Mar. Before we get into today's video, please make sure you click that subscribe button, the bell for notifications, and of course, the like. I hope everyone had a wonderful Labor Day weekend, and I did not get my Monday updates out because of the holiday. But I do have a few updates I want to touch on. Megan Boswell. I want to touch on a new update on Briasia Terrell. I also want to touch on the first video I ever did, Erica Thompson. And let's touch a little bit on Cassandra Contrell, the missing 33-year-old pregnant lady from Tacoma, Washington. And with that, let's uh, get into it. Update, let's touch on Megan Boswell. Prosecutors expected to decide in December 2020 if they will seek the death penalty for uh, Megan Boswell. Megan Boswell, the mother of deceased a toddler Evelyn May Boswell, entered a plea of not guilty to killing her daughter yesterday. She was arraigned by video in Sullivan County Criminal Court after she was indicted by a grand jury on 19 charges, including two counts of felony murder. Boswell's attorney filed a motion for a change of venue because of the extensive media coverage of the case in the region. I'm not sure she can go to any region, any county in the United States and they do not know who she is. So Megan Boswell will return to court December 3rd, 2020, and the state is expected to announce if they intend to seek the death penalty for her. Boswell remains in Sullivan County jail on a $1 million bond. If they actually stream that court hearing live i think i am going to go live and stream it as well all right let's get into the quick update on briasia terrell but really it is on henry earl dinkins the one whose house she spent the night at before she went missing so not that this is really any information of importance but Briasia Terrell, the person of interest, has been moved out of Scott County Jail. The man identified as a person of interest in the disappearance of a 10-year-old Davenport girl has been moved out of the Scott County Jail. Henry Earl Dinkins, age 48, was named a person of interest in the case of missing Briasia Terrell. Terrell was last seen Friday, July 10th, 2020. She was reported missing after going to spend the previous night at an apartment with her half-brother in Dinkins, who is the father of Briasia Terrell's half-brother. Dinkins was in Scott County Jail on an unrelated charge of failing to register as a sex offender. He is now listed as an inmate in this Clinton County Jail. This is one of those stories that I keep saying that just completely bugs the sh out of me. I just do not understand it. I do not understand why there are no updates and it is what it is, I guess, but I think I'm going to have to make a phone call and find out what is going on with at least the search efforts in finding this 10 year old a child. Okay, so I do read a lot of articles. I have a lot of alerts. I try to keep up on every story that I follow and give you guys the latest on the stories. This I actually missed and this broke my heart and I'm going to try to figure out this mother goose but after 10 year old girl vanishes and we are still talking about Briasia Terrell in the night tip leads police to search Lagoon 
and apartment of registered sex offender. So we know that's Henry Earl Dinkins. So Briasia's mother also said this part, that the little girl has physical disabilities related to her hearing and sight. Her eyesight is kind of messed up out of her left eye, and she can't hear out of her left ear, Lankford told the Muscatine Journal. According to KWQC, Briasia is described as 4 feet 5 inches tall, weighing 75 pounds. She has black hair and brown eyes and was last seen wearing a t-shirt, shorts, and flip-flops. Dinkins is a registered sex offender with a criminal history, which we all know, and if you have not seen his criminal history, it is in one of my videos that I did on Briasia Terrell. But Briasia's family, this part is the part that kind of went, made me go, hmm. Briasia's family reportedly asked police to search Fersher Very Park and a lagoon at Credit Island after they heard a tip that Dinkins mentioned something about Mother a Goose. According to the Quad City Times, there is a large Mother Goose structure at the entrance to the park where police and volunteers were seen scouring the area on Friday. I don't know about you, but I'm curious to see what the area looks like, so let's have a look, and you're more than welcome to join me. So I found some pictures, of course, and let's have a look at the park with Mother Goose. And this is the park that Briasia's mother was referring to, and this is the actual search for Briasia Terrell at the lagoon. And this is the area right here. Bring Briasia Terrell home. Somebody knows something and this little girl needs to come home to her family. Okay, let's get into the story Cassandra Contrell. Search for missing pregnant woman, now a homicide a case. Police looking into the disappearance of 33-year-old pregnant woman Cassandra Contrell say they are now investigating it as a homicide case. The announcement comes after police executed a search warrant on the Tacoma, Washington home of Contrell's ex-boyfriend and called in a forensic team. King 5 reported, we had the FBI involved because this is a very intricate case and they have some equipment and some materials and some processes that we don't have that are highly advanced and we are going to need them on this case. Pierce County Sheriff's Detective Ed Troyer told My Northwest, Contrell vanished a week ago after leaving home one day before she was scheduled to have her first a sonogram. Her car was later found abandoned. She is still missing under highly suspicious circumstances, Troyer said. We did develop some new information that they have been around each other recently and that it wasn't just an ex-boyfriend from many years ago, said Troyer. Now, I am not sure if this is the father of her baby, but I thought that I saw an interview where her mother said it was. But do not quote me, I could be wrong. Over the weekend, police confirmed finding Contrell's unoccupied white Mazda sedan and not far from a highway overpass near the Tacoma Dome. Investigators say Contrell was last seen at about 8.30 a.m. on August 25th at 2020 as she drove away from her family's Parkland residence. According to authorities, Contrell's friends believe that she may have planned to go to a grocery store, but there have been no records of financial activity to verify that she went shopping. Contrell is white and stands 5 feet 7 inches tall. She weighs around 180 pounds and has brown hair and blue eyes. There has been no activity on Contrell's cell phone. 
since the day she went missing. Contrell's mother, Marie Smith, told King TV her daughter was excited to be a mother. She already picked out names for a girl or a boy, said Smith. Anyone who sees Contrell is urged to call 911. According to the Paris County Sheriff's Department, authorities served a warrant on a home off K Street in Tacoma, which is around seven miles from the Tacoma Dome. I want to know what house, who owns the house, and see if we can figure out who this ex-boyfriend is. I know, I'm nosy. I'm nosy. So they only put K Street in Tacoma, the house that they are searching, by the Tacoma Dome, but they have a North K Street, they have a South K Street, they have an East K Street, and here is the Tacoma Dome. So I am going to see if I can find the house from the video, and I will let you know. So after driving around Tacoma, Washington for a couple hours yesterday, I finally found the house. I found the name of the ex-boyfriend, supposed father of her child, who is living with his girlfriend in this house. And his girlfriend is 44, he is 37, and I am going to give his name and I'm going to give his girlfriend's name because this is anyone's information correct the house was hard be to find because in the news they had a big fence around and we could not see that the door was orange but this is definitely the house on K Street and 35th K Street there's no doubt in my mind that this is the house. And let's have a look at who owns this house. That's definitely the house. The mailbox, the number, the two windows, the one, the orange beams, the window on top, the stairs, and then the second set of stairs. Let's go around the block and see if we can see that little garage. I used to actually live in Seattle, Washington for a little while, and I'll tell you what, it was beautiful. It was like living in God's country. And there is the garage, right there. Let's pull back into an area. Yep, there's the garage, there's the house. All right, so who is this mysterious boyfriend? Well. Stay tuned, because I'm going to tell you next. I don't know, I might get in trouble for this or have the video taken down, but it is what it is, and what we need to do is find Cassandra Contrell and bring her home and her unborn child. This is her ex-boyfriend, and this is the man who owns the house on South K Street, Colin Dudley. This is the boyfriend. You can't make it up. Tacoma, Washington. That is where the house is. And his girlfriend is Rebecca Fisher. And if you look at her profile picture and you look at Cassandra Contrell's Facebook and her pictures, it's like they're into the horror, Rocky Horror shows and things like that. So what I gather is that back when she was 19, her and Colin were an item, but Colin was also with a girl, his girlfriend. So they had an affair. Then he got back with the girlfriend, and rumor has that he she goes and visits him before he goes to work in the evening. And Rebecca found out that she was pregnant. She does not like Cassandra. And it went from there, and it's ironic that she went to tell him about the pregnancy the day that she disappeared to see if he wanted anything to do with the baby's life. So, that is all I have on the Cassandra Contrell case. 
but the last case, but the one that is dear to my heart is going to be the final one and that is coming up next. And I did look at their backgrounds. Um, Colin has a traffic violation and Rebecca Fisher is a pretty clean. So that's that. This is the case that made me decide to start a channel. I had asked another creator if she would put this story out for me and she told me that she would not put it out because she was not young enough and she was not pretty enough. And I'm talking about Erica Thompson. So with that, let's get into the first story I ever did and let's give an update on the story. Now, I have been in touch with Erica Thompson's son on Facebook. We have not spoken recently, but we have spoken, and he is a very nice man, and I can't imagine it's going on a year, and your mother goes to the store, to the bank, and her and her car are never seen again. So let's get into the article, because some of you may not know it, but a year later, no word on missing Brookfielder police chief says detectives continue to pursue investigation. So this was on Tuesday, September 8th, 2020. Later this month will mark one year since 53-year-old Brookfield resident Erica Thompson went missing. The last time she was seen alive was on the afternoon of September 25th, 2019, when a security camera captured her making a bank deposit in the Eight Corners Business District, not too far from her home in the 20. 9200 block of Monroe Avenue. During the early hours of the following morning, according to police, her cell phone traveled through several neighboring towns, including Countryside, Hodgkins, McCook, Forest View, Summit, and Bridgeview. And this is Illinois. Early during the investigation, it was revealed that at some point after her disappearance, Thompson's cell phone pinged a tower in Springfield, Missouri. Other than that, however, there hasn't been a trace of either Thompson or her car, which is a dark purple 2014 Nissan Juke with Illinois license plate number E273380. They have the picture, the new article picture. It's a blue Juke that they have out, but it is a dark, dark purple juke. It's mentally exhausting with the added stress of the pandemic. It's just amazing how hard it is, said Dana Thompson, who is Erica's sister. In a phone interview last week, we're still hoping that maybe she's somewhere. I have reached out to her sister on Twitter as well, but I'm not too sure that her sister is big on social media, but I know that her son MJ is big on Facebook. The police investigation so far has involved a number of agencies, including two suburban task forces and the FBI, which helped track cell phone data. The FBI's contribution led Brookfield police to hire an organization to help them search waterways in the vicinity of where her phone traveled early on September 26. Using sonar equipped a boat, police searched shipping canals, trying to find vehicles matching the dimensions of Thompson's Nissan Juke. Only one of the dozen vehicles they found submerged in those waterways fit the dimensions of Thompson's car, but a diver sent down to investigate confirmed it was not hers. Well, how many cars are in the shipping canal? That's a little scary. Brookfield Police Chief Edward Petrak said that last week that Brookfield detectives have sought the assistance of police in other jurisdictions, though he declined to specify where exactly. From the beginning, this was a case of 
missing person with suspicious circumstances, Petrick said. We've handled it as almost as if it was a homicide case. We're so hopeful we can find her and we are going to keep working at this until the case is solved. Petrack said he was unable to provide any further information on whether police have interviewed anyone suspected to have been involved in the Thompson disappearance. Now, I do know that her ex-boyfriend was brought into custody. I do not know if he was in jail. He's still in jail, but I did hear that he was in jail, of course, on unrelated charges than Erica Thompson's disappearance. He did mention that detectives had written 150 supplemental reports documenting their investigation, indicating they have pursued numerous leads. Kuzwaski said she met in person with Brookfield detectives in late August to get an update on the investigation, describing the more than 200-page file on the investigation, but there wasn't much new police could reveal, she said. Police didn't tell me a whole lot, so what I gathered is they're still actively working on it, Kowalski said. We are waiting for somebody to talk because somebody knows something. Erica Thompson's son, Michael Russo, who said he's battled anxiety and depression for years, now has the added worry of saving his mother's home. Oh, Michael Russo, I feel so bad for him. I cannot even imagine what he is going through that just to not know where your mother is. And if you do not know the original story, it is actually the first video I did on missing people. And if you want to watch it, make sure you check it out. Russo's aunt pointed him in the direction of an attorney to see if there's a way he can serve as the property's administrator so he can work with his mother's lender and avoid foreclosure. Attorney Greg Martucci told the landmark that he has filed a petition for letters of administration to collect in Cook County Probate Court. If her son Michael J. Russo, my client, is granted letters of office, he will have the authority to represent his mother estate in matters pertaining to her property and her creditors, Martucci said. He and Russo appeared via Zoom before a judge on August 27th and that due to the case's unusual circumstances, the judge took the matter under advisement. We are currently monitoring the case to see whether and when the order is entered, Martucci said. Unfortunately, the clerk of court has been slow to post the orders after they have been signed. But so far as I can determine, there has not been any legal action filed to date with respect to the mortgage on Erica's home. Russo said the lender, which at first was willing to communicate with him, has cut off communication. He added that a bank representative indicated to him that the institution likely would seek foreclosure after one year of non-payment. It's unclear whether the bank will act due to the pandemic, but the property is not out of the woods. The property taxes haven't been paid for the past two installments and are eligible for sale. Although the pandemic has delayed the tax sale indefinitely. He set up an online fundraiser, gofundme.com slash F slash save Erica Thompson. You know, I will go ahead and attach this in the description setting a goal of 135000 but the pitch hasn't gained much traction, raising a little more than 800 in the months since it was started. Russo said he also spoke to police recently, but like his aunt, they didn't have much new information to reveal. They are still trying to figure out where the car went and where the phone traveled, Russo said. I would love to get Michael MJ to come on a live and talk to us and it would probably help him. We can get the word out a little more because his mother's case is not talked about. It may be, you know, talked about in Illinois, but I never see anything on it unless, of course, because I go looking for it. All right, guys, I think that is going to end the videos for the day. And with that, it is a wrap. I want to thank you all for coming in. Thank you for watching. Please like or dislike whichever you prefer and subscribe. Everyone stay safe from COVID-19. Stay vigilant and have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world. I am out.